I ran Raymond Meeks from uh, North Queensland. He was a world-beating artist, educator and community leader. He was always very clear that his art was traditional work and traditional stories, but in a contemporary form and using contemporary techniques. He had successful exhibitions all around Australia and overseas. Also was a, a leader in, in health promotion and education, HIV in particular, and travelled the world doing both. Uh, Roan passed away way too young in 2021 and just left a huge legacy of younger people who are mentored by his artistic and cultural legacy. He was very well loved in Cairns, Brisbane, Sydney, all over Australia and, and many parts of the world. Aroma was a pretty colourful character. He's very larger than life. People always said he lived a very short life, but he certainly packed a hell of a lot into it. He was a very unique person. He sort of always seemed to be on the crest of a wave here or something new, even up to when he passed away. You know, there was so much about to happen. I was always in awe of the huge network that, you know, not just in Australia, but internationally that, that he created. He was an incredible connector. It all stemmed from a core of, of art, a conduit to um, connecting everybody, you know. His art career, as I understand it, he started art college here in Sydney in the 80s, helped set up Bomali Aboriginal Arts Cooperative, Australia's first contemporary Aboriginal art movement, or art collective, as I understand it. First stamp ever made by a contemporary Aboriginal artist was his. He was the first Australian artist of any kind to get a residency a year long in the Cité des Arts in Paris. Paris really opened up for him his own creativity to make his own Aboriginal stories the centrepiece of what he was trying to say. He went to Festival of Pacific Arts of Indigenous peoples all around the Pacific and shared his artwork and interacted with dancers and, and visual arts as well. He won uh, several art awards, most notably the UNICEF International Children's Storybook Award for Enora and the Black Crane. He's helped start Cairns Indigenous Art Fair, started advocating for the need to make art more accessible to the general public. So just an amazing career. But I've only said half of his life, really, in terms of the, the art and, and his contributions. Later in life, he sort of, you know, or we both were getting older and he, he didn't produce as much art as he did, but he, he, he was an amazing teacher. He taught in all the communities, especially up in, in FMP and, and Bamago and, and all over the place. And it, he was a teacher at TAFE. And he'd always say, oh, you know, I'm not painting anymore. And I'd always say back that you're still creating, you know, you're still, you're still putting that into other people and, and you know, young people. He's one of those go-to people that, you know, if people wanted someone with sort of the statesman quality and, and he just had this knowledge that people sought out. As a person living with HIV AIDS, he was never ashamed of that. And he helped teach many other people, um, Aboriginal, non-Aboriginal and all sorts, to do that. And that was the core of his, his work. He worked in many community projects, Two Spirits a Project among them with Queensland AIDS Council. He also did a whole lot of advocacy, went to conferences and spoke out and, you know, in the 90s, anybody admitting that HIV was a big deal, but an Aboriginal gay person admitting and talking about it was particularly radical. And being able to work with elders, you know, very sensitive conversations, particularly in some remote communities, and being able to go in in a really respectful way and open these sensitive topics. He was able to tread those fine lines and talk with people. He often did that through his art. He used art again as the universal language to get across really sensitive messages and help people explore their own identities, their own meanings in life, their own creative artistic expression.
So again, his contribution was in helping younger queer people just be themselves and not be ashamed. He would run wor art workshops at conferences for people living with HIV and sister girls and brother boys and just all of the um, queer Aboriginal mob, you know, would put on a drag show from time to time, always have a laugh and be the centre of jokes and attention. I got to meet him only when I was about 20, 21, and I'd never met an Aboriginal person who was so worldly. He showed me that there was a much bigger world beyond, you know, North Queensland and Australia even. So he, he taught me to be me and to not be ashamed and to not be so serious and to be open to new ideas and new cultures. Yeah, uh, he was like a big brother and just taught me my first drag. And I asked him that night what his drag name was and he said Josephine Falls because he loved Josephine Baker, right? Aboriginal, French, black French kind of storyline. But in Cairns, just near Cairns, there's a really well-known local watering spot and a waterfall's called Josephine Falls. So he took that name, Josephine Falls, and around, he, one of his favorite songs was um, Young Hearts Run Free. So that was his number. He, Josephine comes out, she's doing a show, and we turned around and we had this massive thud and we turned around and she'd indeed fallen over. So Josephine Falls, came true that night and ever since she's always been Josephine Falls. <laughs> and he could just make everyone laugh and, you know, be at ease, but always had a message, but a really relatable way of getting things across and talking to people. And so for many queer Aboriginal people, he was a leading light. He showed us that you could be a leader in your own way without the fight and that the, the, the way to be a leader was to know your own story and share that with others. You know, in, in a way, our own was public property here. He sort of, everybody owned him. Um, when, when he passed away, we organised a, a huge memorial and it was big and it, in a way, the town was quite shocked. I mean, um, that he passed away and there was a huge reaction to it. He just brought everybody together. His work was always about everybody that came along with him and was, you know, sort of meant to be embracive and giving back out to a community, you know. So I think his most significant accomplishment, apart from amazing awards and exhibitions, is that his art was not ever just for fame or for money or for, for ego. His art was to impart meaning and identity and story. And yeah, and, and in that sense, he's carried on a rich tradition of millennia of Aboriginal people who understand that art is not about the visual, it's about life and helping people carry a proper story, a proper story of ethics, a proper story of looking after country, a proper story of being related to each other and to the dreaming. I think he also had a very clear sense that the dreaming is also now. The time of creation is not just a single point in time. Creation is happening right now and we have the ability, if we understand the stories properly and remember them respectfully and ethically and teach them to others in that good way, what that's actually helping us do is tap into our own creative energy right now. And, you know, others might call that love or the force or, you know, whatever kind of culture you come from or belief system, but it's, it's helping us understand and realise our greatest human potential through art and creativity.